Welcome to today's episode, and you know who it is, Miss Annie. Well, another episode, and you know I never disappoint. Today, you actually cannot believe how on my couch is our one and only Effia. <laughs> Welcome to today's episode. What's up, E? You know, you know how it is. You know how it is. I mean, you tell me. <laughs> How's it been? How's it been? Uh, I had a really crazy day, you know. Mm -hmm. I had to try and make it here, regardless of the circumstances. Uh, um, so, I mean, let's make it worth it. It has to be worth it. <laughs> it has to be worth it. Anyways, I think you're one of the few vocalists we have in the country, right? I mean... We have up to... I mean, female vocalists. Yeah. There are not a lot of vocalists. There are a lot of singers, though. Singers, but we don't have a lot of vocalists. Yeah, but it's cool. I think what it is... Is for every singer that would want to advance whatever to mm. another stage, you know, there's levels to it. It mm. depends on what sound you're trying to present, mm -hmm. you know. Once it's um good for you, yeah, it will be good for somebody too. Mm. Yeah, I think one of the things I one of the problems I have is with this because you feel like you're a vocalist, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think my problem with people is that you know <clears throat> when I sing, yeah. If you are a singer, so you should probably... Yeah. When I sing and then I'm going off, mm -hmm. or it's not sounding right in my ears, I can't tell. But there's some type of people who sing and it's going off, and in their head, it sounds like it's, it's okay. I don't know if... Like, you hear someone mm. sing and they think they're so good. I mean, when you when you sound bad, you should know. People actually do not know. That's crazy. I don't know people You, like you don't that. see people go for auditioning when you oh, have really I bad mean, that's voice. that's audition. Bad. That's a lot of people that don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's auditions. But after the auditions, if you're chosen, that means you have some kind of vocal dexterity that is um, presentable to whatever audience, you know, you were singing to. Yeah. Yeah, so... But I believe there are a lot of very, very amazing vocalists mm -hmm. in the country now. Yeah. Especially females um, who would, you know, from my example, know that because I sing the way I sing, they can also sing the way they want to sing too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, one of the reasons why I actually wanted to have if you're here is for us to talk about the if you're that we do not know. Literally, I think most of the things I know about Swiss in relation to your music career behind microphone, you know, she has a voice. I want, I want to know how was it for you growing up, like your family, you were a church. I know a lot of singers mm -hmm. and rappers actually styles as being church singers. Then eventually mm -hmm. they happen to like yeah, come I out. Yeah, I think, you know, when you're growing up in Ghana, the best place for you to exhibit any kind of talent when it comes to this kind of like singing, acting, I think, um, mm -hmm. it's from church, you know. You get to join different groups and do choreography and you get to join different groups and do choir. Mm -hmm. I was in the choir to all the way to mass choir. Really? You know? Yeah. I wanted to join it so much that I used to go for their rehearsal like on vacations before they did their explosion. <laughs> Yeah, but when I was in it, it was really cool. Um, it was, you know, um, for every singer, you have, like, a target that you want to hit, mm -hmm. you know? So I did a lot of competitions with Missionettes when we were growing up, singing competitions and stuff. Missionettes? But, yeah. That sounds real good. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Um, yeah, so Moscow was a big target for me. Yeah. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. so I went to KNUST to do the thing they do with everybody else. <laughs> I think it's a competition or something. Okay. Yeah, do they still do it? I really do not know. I also left Michelle like quite a long time ago. That's cool. I don't know what's going on but, there. But it was fun. It was a very good way to like exhibit your talent with people that had the same kind of mindset, mm -hmm. you know, especially like nice vocalists and stuff. People that can actually sing. Okay. So yeah. you were not actually like a church church girl. Most of most of the people I, that sing I, I say were a church, church girl. girl. Yeah. I was actually a church church girl. Everybody in my family was very ch it's very churchy it's still till date very mm -hmm. very much till we date. wake up at dawn and pray together till date yeah till date mm -hmm. for real yeah oh that's interesting mm -hmm. so but if you miss it you pay money oh come on oh it's that's nice. a joke I can't no. money if you miss rehearsal you pay money so why okay, is it okay, like okay. you don't if you miss your money devotion you shouldn't pay you should pay but that's that's a friend no it's okay it helps mm. discipline but why is that people who actually start singing in church don't continue? Because why don't you just continue from, like, you know, gospel music? Because um, you grow up to become who you are destined to be. Depending on what your choices are, as mm. you grow, they will define you. That's so, depending on the choices you make, if you made the choice to continue on that path, 
that's where you would excel. Mm -hmm. If you take the other path, you make sure you have to excel there. Mm -hmm. There is no um, assurance that that's you know you're gonna be excel just because mm -hmm. you're a gospel artist. Yeah. There's no assurance on the other side too. Mm -hmm. But in the end, you get to make the choice. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so when did you actually start to come out? Like, how many years have you been in the music, the whole music industry thing? Making music. Say professionally, after Stars of the Future would have been like probably 15 years now. 15 Maybe years. 16. Wow. I mean, when we calculate it, we'll see. <laughs> I won my first award 2008. For right? real? Mm, yeah, VGMA's best female vocal. It was me and Irene that won. I don't even know Irene. That's fine too. <laughs> she's doing the system. She's where she needs to be. For real. She's doing amazing. Mm -hmm. She's a wonderful person. That's a vocalist. Okay. Irene Logan is one of the best vocalists that ever come out of Af Africa. Mm -hmm. Boom. She's. I can't even swear. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been about 16. Yeah. Well, professionally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what was your first hit? In Ghana? Yeah. Um, maybe Sexy Sassy Wahala. What year was that? Um, they put it in the movie. So it came out with the songs that I... Um, a couple of my songs leaked and then they became hits. There was one of them that was called Nothing. There was um, Sexy Sassy Wahala. There was A Moment's Notice that I used the end of a Robin Thicke song to do the song and then yeah they put it in the movie so it became a hit so and then little things to invest in me mm -hmm. okay, that's all right, huh? the collaborations mm -hmm. and then the collaborations and then keeps going yeah how did it start how did it start was it an auditioning something yeah it went to start of the future when oh we, well yeah the first one it was the first of its kind i think we started the first generation mm -hmm. of like, what would you call it? Singing competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you guys actually started it in the country. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. And how has it been? Because I actually, actually happen to have known. I was hearing of someone's is someone's issue. They finished with um, one of the um <coughs> competitions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they are saying that coming out. One thing about this country is that coming out on your own to you know start music, you have to push a lot. Mm -hmm. yourself you know i was i was talking to the guys before you decided before in nigeria i feel like there's a lot of push yeah, but then but actually because, people, um, yeah there's a lot of work and blood and tears that have been shed for the music to be what it is today mm -hmm. and for the access you know a lot mm -hmm. of people put a lot of work to be able to open up the international world to accepting african music for what it is now mm -hmm. um so, it's not really about Ghana. It's about everybody, you know. What happens is, now, there has been a level of education. People are much more open-minded about how to structure the business side of the music mm -hmm. for it to affiliate to the talent side. Okay. It has to go both ways. Mm -hmm. You can't do the music if you don't have money. It's yeah. a very financial situation because you got to use money to make money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you do need the investment. You do need the support. And Ghana just started streaming a couple of years ago. We didn't have Spotify, okay. but they were still using it to check, you know, numbers and stuff came inside and the game changed. But we have the advantage of knowledge, right? And a beautiful sound that cannot be duplicated. So it's up to us to do what we got to do with what we have. And s maybe stop comparing and stuff. It doesn't think, help. It doesn't work. I think it's not It's not really with comparison. It's not really with... Com but yeah. okay, you, the if thing you is blow that, in Lagos, you're yeah. good. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. If you blow in Lagos, mm -hmm. you're good. Mm -hmm. But if you blow in Lagos, you can blow in different states in Nigeria. Okay. If you blow in Accra... You, it's not really that crazy. I think the numbers count. The numbers are not the same. The numbers yeah. are nowhere close to each yeah, other. Yeah, more than us. That's why you have to blow in Accra, you blow in Kumasi, you have to blow in Takrade. Then try and enter Nigeria and blow in Lagos. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah. Even 
by then, you get me? Mm -hmm. It should have entered in a certain way. But now there's different marketing strategies, mm -hmm. right? You could basically get the money you need and put it in the right places to advance your soul. PR, marketing, exposure, content. Ooh, wow, content. Mm -hmm. Again, again, content. Mm -hmm. Big, big. You get me? Yeah. It takes one video to make, like, a person on the street mm -hmm. turn into a telecaster. Right? Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, what are you going to do with the things that you already have to get the things that you want? If you concentrate on the things that you don't have, you are going to ignore the things that you already have. That could be expanded into the things that you have. Boom. But in relation to the investments, do you actually, do people in the music, the Ghanaian music industry actually get the investments? No, it's not really that crazy here. In Nigeria, given somebody... 20 million to invest in their music is nothing for some people. Mm -hmm. You get. Yeah. I don't think there's any artist that could tell me that an investor in Ghana has given them a million dollars. Why? Why is this so? They, they don't see it. They don't see it like they see it in Nigeria. So you actually have to c keep convincing them by impressing them with your numbers and what it is you've been able to do by yourself. If you tell the investor, I've been able to make 200k this year right mm -hmm. so that means that if you double me up right that's mm -hmm. 400 i could make that 200 back by the half of the year because i'd be having extra investment to cut the short the work short to make it much more better mm -hmm. now if you if you flip the money and you able to flip it right you get 600 you pay them back they'll still give you money because you're able to pay them back mm -hmm. right but this structure has not been established here very well so now you don't have the money to start mm -hmm. you gotta find it yourself and it's expensive shooting a video in ghana right now you're not spending more than 40 grand for real F like forty thousand ghana cities imagine happening to you and then music. you know that there's some mm -hmm. tv stations that will not take a video if it's not 4k so that means you have to shoot on red Mm. And I'm sure with your experience, so, mm -hmm. so you are learning how much it is to. Mm. One of the reasons why I had to come is because <laughs> I don't want you to waste your yeah. money. Do you yeah. understand? Yeah. So, yes, we do need the investments, but it's about convincing the people that even might want. To. And then, you know, some people have also invested in people that have fucked with them. Sorry. Mm -hmm. mm, you get me? So, yeah. twice bitten, thrice shy, <laughs> never trying to be shy again. So in relation to a music video, imagine you make a video, let's say your music, you spend about 40 k yeah, it doesn't then, blow. And then it does, it's not assured. The what only happens? thing that's assured is the thing that God has already planned that we don't know that you will have faith Okay. in the things that you believe will come even when they are not there. So the magic is structure, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Knowing that you spend this much on the video, you want it to be reach the right people, right? Mm -hmm. So after you shoot the video, you got to do marketing. Okay. How are you selling the sound? How are you pushing the music? Now you got to pay the dancers to do the challenge, right? Mm -hmm. Then you got to pay the influencers to post it, mm -hmm. right? Then you got to do monetization on YouTube mm -hmm. so that it goes like ads. You know when the ads come, yeah, the videos yeah. come before you watch and it's mm. by force, you have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> All of those things come into play. By the time you're done, you spend another 40K on promo. Wow. Yeah. So if the song is not hidden at that point, that means that you should have 100,000 that you might be ready to lose. It's like a gambling, basically. It is a gamble. But what it is is... Once you're assured in what you're doing, and you know you got the magic, right? Mm -hmm. There's a beautiful part of the story where every anything can happen at any time. Yeah. Yes. So you got to keep yourself up. You got to be on your toes and just be ready. For when the whirlwind happens, for you to be able to take it to the next level. So that you're not back where you are. Hmm. And then money doesn't become a problem. Wow. Well. Then you spend how you spend on what you need to spend on, and you see the benefit. Makes sense. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like a lot of people also have the talent and the music and the, the talent and the money, but then 
still not reaching the audience that they expect. Oh, to yeah. Reach out to. Then you gotta, you can't do the same thing. Expect different results. It's called insanity. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby, now say and yeah, Juma. Normally now, but dream who know I can say oh, and they are sorry. And yeah, yeah. And they ain't nothing you hear the busy right. Mm-hmm. You gotta find different avenues to like market your stuff. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. If you on a certain block and it's not selling for you on that block, you move four blocks down. Maybe there's people there that need what you're selling more than the people that was where you was. Mm. Right? That's why when you're doing promo, you do some promo in Accra. You do some promo in Nigeria. You go to London. That's the headquarters of the Afrobeat sound. Mm-hmm. You feel me? You go to London. If you can go to America, you go to America. You get people there that will make you be talking in the right places. You do the right interviews. Now the world will see you. Then you make sure that any time that they give you the mic to sing, you got to blow everybody away immediately. Boom. Because it's that one video that you sang your heart out that Celine Dion will see and refuse to die. You get me? Mm-hmm. And it can happen. We've seen it happen. So now, every time that you are given the chance to exhibit what it is that your talent is, make sure that you give it your all. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. And never that's, know. that's one of the best ways that you can actually get yourself out there. Mm. Because then anyone that sees you will know that, oh, maybe he doesn't have much, but he has something. Mm-hmm. And somebody has to see that in you for them to invest in you. Okay. I think one of the <clears throat> things that also came up over the period is that when it comes to some countries, they are actually bringing some artists out. Yeah, so let's let's use you for example. Let's say you are if yeah, everybody knows if yeah. Then if yeah happens to train someone else into yes, the system. Yes. But I don't think we, we really have that we here. We don't have that because the first artist has to have enough money. Or let me just say it. I, there was too much money. There was so much money. I had to start spending money on some other... <laughs> art. You know, girl, stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How can you spend money on artists if you don't have the money yourself? The Ghanaian artists are not invested in enough to be able to even put other people on. It becomes hard. Mm-hmm. And carrying somebody's burden like that when you already have yours is not healthy. You know, you either start blaming... You get me? It mm-hmm. it's, becomes toxic. We've seen so many of these situations with artists and their managers because no dream so it may be a bit me a buano pa unti mean buani pa unti mean boa huan unti mean boa biao and so to me boa huan you have to be solid in yourself before you can give some energy they said a half cup full what you gonna do mm. you gotta fill yourself up you can't give if you're not full. And that's one of the issues that we have here. A lot of people would love to help some people, but they got to help themselves first. You get me? Yeah. Because if I want to help you or set up set up a label kind of situation, I have to have the money for the label, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will be. And you know that happens. Sometimes you, be, you see people that will just be following the other person around for a while. Mm-hmm. And they can't really do much, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, we do need the investment. Hopefully, maybe the government will do something about it. Hmm. Um, but if not, let me tell you something. It's not impossible. Do you get me? Yeah. When you listen to people's success stories, you have to go through it, right? Mm-hmm. But my message is learn from everything that you go through so that your tomorrow is better than your today. Okay. You feel me? Yeah. Because there's lessons everywhere. And then you can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. So if you're trying a strategy and it's not working, just change it. And also, everything's on YouTube, bro. And it's free. You know? Mm -hmm. Learn about the thing that you want to do so much. There's hacks in there. Yeah. So. One of the things that also pop up is unity. In relation to Ghana in particular, we have a lot of people saying that the artists themselves are not united as Honestly, one. I don't have beef with anybody, so I don't know about that. No, it's not It's not really beef. <laughs> no, but in relation to, like, oh. I see artists go to, let's say there's a, they're having a tour somewhere, go to, let's say, London, yeah? Then one artist, let's say it's 
one particular artist, but then later he you realize that he brings other artists on stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like here, it's like people are not really, really together. Like it's one mm -hmm. show. It's like everybody wants to shine on themselves, but like mm -hmm. in different countries, it's like okay, we are together. Where? Which other country? Oh, that, you know, you know, Where? you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Obviously, <laughs> mostly like in Nigeria. It's a decoy. Okay, mostly. You feel me? What you see is not really how it how is. How it is. Yeah, but then that's what people see as well. I mean. We, um, there are shows in the be, country. You have to be inside to know, baby. Like, mm. there's a lot that people can assume, mm -hmm. you know? I think also, everyone for themselves, God for us all, right? Because, first off, whatever tour they're going on, is a promoter that booked it. Okay. Can the promoter pay for other artists to come? The other artists, the supporting artists might not be willing to support if you are not paying them. Are you going to pay them from the money that the promoter is paying you? Mm. Boom. Okay. Even if they are supposed to sing one one songs, right? Mm -hmm. You know you have to get their visas. And okay. that's a work visa. Okay. To okay. go to London. Yeah. Maybe one, one week, two weeks, tops, they'll give you. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you're going to tell the other artist, oh, Charlie, me not to be you. They're trying to get paid. Even if they're starting out and they've just got one hit, they're still trying to get paid. But I was thinking it's relationship. As you mean, let's say... It is just relationship. Cool. We've done a lot of that for the people that we know are worth it. But the reason why you don't see that it's done is because it's not everybody that's worth it. Some people would do it for some people, but not everybody would do it for each other. So in my head, I'm thinking... Let's so say, go and ask the people that you know love you yeah. and care about you okay. and will use the stage... Mm -hmm. For their own benefit. Mm -hmm. Now take that opportunity that you're in London for two weeks to do things that will advance their career. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Boom. Now, in that circumstance, you can't have more than four people on your own set. If you're doing a show abroad, there's time to it. You see that they'll say that, oh, Drake had to pay 200000 extra to Kiniko Kiniko. Bruh. If it's a promoter that's bringing it and they didn't sell out the show, already, nah, maybe you're annoying him because you didn't bring the numbers that you promised. Mm. And then a lot of the streams are fake and they don't transfer into real ticket Gosh. sales, mm. right? So here you are and then you see that the person has a lot of streams, but they're not bringing in the numbers. At that point, no promoter is going to add other artists to it unless the artist is already in London and they can cut their cost and still make the impact. That's why a lot of the summers, you want to be out there. Mm. Yeah, you got to you gotta get a work visa by the beginning of the year. Make sure that you're out there in the summer. Be there for two months. You will get opportunities to make sure that you'll be paid for. And little drops of water will make mighty ocean. You don't have to do the big places first. Okay. You can start small. As long as you're impressive to your fans and they get to have that feeling they are going to get that you, you keep them in your heart forever because that's the magic the fans will come to the show because of how they feel about you mm -hmm. how they feel about the music and then when they see you perform you take their breath away you ignite them you pass on the energy they feel that they're part of the journey and there's an association that's why fans will fly to London to go and if, the, if Beyonce is coming and it's not close to the house, they will find it. I've flown to South Africa to go see her before. Okay. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So, you have the power, though. It's about what you're going to use it for. Mm. Has there been a point in your life where you thought, like, oh, I want to give up in relation to music? I mean, I've had really bad days, bad times, especially with, like, my heartbreak. And stuff like that. But regardless of it, I never feel like I don't want to sing again. It's my lifeline. So you when know? you have difficult moments like that, what do you do? I sing. Okay. And then I feel better. And then I hear myself and I be like, shit, bitch. You can't be acting like this. You a fucking maestro. You a big dragon. You breathe fire. Okay. Stop playing. Mm -hmm. Whatever this is, it will go away. And you will always figure it out. Because mm -hmm. you are mighty. And you are strong and you are powerful. That's what my voice does for me. 
It lets me know there's only one of me. So when I have bad days, I sing. And then I realize my power, and I'll be like, oh, shit, you're right. Let me go buy me some jewelry and feel good. And I then think you it's keep going. Basically about believing in yourself. Very much so. Daily. Especially even in the bad times. Mm -hmm. You need it very much so. Because, you know, the world has changed so much. People are not who they are anymore after COVID. Mm -hmm. So, everybody is still trying to figure it out. So, don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Life is hard already as much as it is. You know, so loving yourself is very important. Through the thick and the thin, you've got to try as much as possible not to beat yourself up too much mm -hmm. and love yourself more. It helps, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it helps like to your figure worth stuff and all out. Stuff like that. Yeah, knowing your worth and all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> How about the support? How's the support going from people, friends, family in general? Oh, I was destined to do what I'm doing. Everybody loved me. <laughs> I'm good. My mother is so proud. She's like my superhero mm -hmm. and my best friend and my girlfriend. All together. You know, uh, my dad is amazing. You know, he's a very, very intelligent mom, professor. Mm -hmm. I come from a very, very calm, sweet, loving family. Yeah, I'm very grateful for them because um, having a support system, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's really good in this work that we do. Because there's a lot of fake people around you. Mm. But knowing your real people is your family is very, very safe. It gives you a kind of security that you have forever. It won't go away. It's not a fake friend. Mm -hmm. Mm. How did your family react to when you wanted to do music? A lot of people, when they want to do the music, their parents are like, oh, no, you know, I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted yeah, to be but that was like a long time ago. People are sending their children to music school now. Well, yeah, it's a different era. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, I wanted to go to Juilliard so that I can be like a maestro because in the end, you know, you have to educate yourself to become like a master. Okay. There's levels to it, beginner, you know. It's like a game mm -hmm. when you're playing levels, right? Yeah. One, two, three, yeah. four, five. Yes, in Kung Fu, you have to now become the Shisheng. And then, like, you keep going, mm -hmm. depending on your, what kind of chakras you are able to, like, access and stuff like that. There's a kid that can use his mind to move objects because mm -hmm. he's been practicing since he was young. Mm -hmm. It's like that. Educating yourself about what it is that you want to do is very important, you know. So I can read music. I can write it. That's cool. Yeah. I play a little bit of piano to hear. I wanted to learn guitar, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yes. But Pop advancing cycle. your craft is also very important mm. of making it long lasting. Mm. Mm. What do you think is one one of the few things that we can do as a country to make the industry, like the music, the Ghana music industry, better? What? <laughs> Just a few things. Obviously, there should be probably. Um, I feel like we're all trying to figure it out right now. Mm -hmm. Especially now, you know. We're all trying to figure it out. I think um, in the end, togetherness will be the best solution. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. But we pray that God will open everybody's eyes so that we see how beneficial we can be to each other. Yeah. So that there wouldn't be any kind of doubt. Mm -hmm. Because when there's doubt, that's what brings about, like, you know different thoughts and wondering if this person is for you or against you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you're sure of something, nobody needs to tell you twice. Yeah. Yeah. So togetherness, investment, um, we need to um, form like a bond if we can. Because we're all really amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. I just feel like everybody is going through their own thing. And, you know, Ghanaians were not brought up to talk about their feelings. Well, bottled up. Mm, there's a lot of things bottled up. And maybe one day we'll all get the chance to have a really big therapy session and then let it go. Mm -hmm. 
so that we can be our best. Yeah. But shout out to everybody pushing. It's not easy. Yeah, yeah and some people are doing amazing. And we're going to do what we're going to do to support them in our own best way mm-hmm. as they would support us, you know. Well, well. Yeah. What would you say that to the young ones? There are a lot of people. I personally know of a friend of mine who started music. He did a lot of songs, but eventually deleted his whole Instagram account because it wasn't going anywhere, and then he was literally frustrated. Mm-hmm. But then eventually happened to see that he had started again. So it's like they give up and they're like, mm, now nah, let me just continue. How will mm-hmm. you encourage the, the young ones? Since you haven't there, I mean, it's it's like everything else that you do in your life. You, it's not just with music; it's with everything. It's not easy. So yes, you have days where you want to delete your whole situation. You have days where you don't feel like singing, you know? Mm-hmm. You have days. But, like, you got to keep yourself busy regardless. Right. Because the devil finds, like, things for people to do when they're not doing nothing. Okay. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And then there you are. You feel like you're doing something, but it's not for you. You don't let your mind take the full control. Okay. In the end, you still have to find a way to be in charge. Mm-hmm. So, yes, have your difficult days, but don't stay there. Find the light and go for it. And if you feel like you're going to stop and it's going to make you happy, you don't sit there. You have to go and find something else that will now resolve you. Yeah. Yeah? So, just keep pushing. You got to be studious, right? You got to be on point. Don't give yourself too much pressure. Now, nobody wants another Whitney Houston. Nobody wants another F here. We want another you. Okay. You are the only one that is going to make yourself special. Bet? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, with the difficulties that come with life and whatever it is you have chosen to go with, know that it will not be easy. Mm -hmm. You know, I think trying to put your mind down and be like, oh, yeah, I've seen it being done. It doesn't look that hard. It's the wrongest thing ever. It looks easy. Until you are the one doing it, actually. It looks easy until you're the one doing it. Mm. And uh, there's a thing they say, me na mi timi jem na mi huseni a shishimi. So until you're in the fire, you will know how hard it is, right? Mm-hmm. But just keep going. I know keep saying keep going is kind of some way because mm-hmm. you're like, oh, Jane, you have 35 hours, rare, mm-hmm. rare, rare. Even me, I'm keeping going. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of achievements, but I still want some more. Yeah. So, the same way I'm deciding to not stop, you should also decide not to stop. Especially if you believe in yourself. Okay. Yeah. And then change your mindset. It's not by force to be positive all the time. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. But just try and know that your mind is a powerful tool. And even when you're, you're having a shitty day, your mind can tell you that tomorrow will be better. And you will feel better. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Last two questions before we end the episode. The first one is, what do you have to say about people who f- who take um, celebrities, artists, as role models, and then, let's say this, and if, you know, you have a lot of influence mm-hmm. on the younger ones, yeah. So they're having to say that, oh, probably you have like this bad attitude or this bad thing happens or comes out about you. Mm-hmm. It affects the people. Mm-hmm. Do you think you owe the people the way you live your life, how you live your life, or, you know, it's just anything. I mean, the fact that you put yourself in that position, you should know that people are watching. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, we show you guys what we want you to see, exactly. but you think that you see things, which is also cool. Um, In the end, don't pass around messages that's going to hurt people, Right? Even if you just want to hurt yourself, knowing your impact is very important. So, try your best. That's all you can really do. But also to the people, take the parts of the person that you like. (laughs) Leave the part that you don't like, right? You can't change them. They're the only person that can change them. So... Don't go and say, because this person is doing something, I'm also doing some. You are the fool, (laughs) not them. (laughs) Set it straight. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 If you know the person is doing something bad, why are you also doing it and blaming them on it? Mm -hmm. They didn't make that decision. You You did. did. 
in between all of the person, the person has characters, different characters that you would have assumed that you know. Mm -hmm. Take the good stuff. Don't take the bad stuff and then blame the person. You feel me? Yeah, I got to. Yeah, because then the person is not around to help you fix it. Mm. When you go get into whatever trouble, you understand? If I go and rap, rap, and then I go and insult somebody and they are coming to beat me, I'd be like, ha, ah, Jay-Z said, <laughs> I should rap the way I rap and I feel the way I feel. They'll beat you now. Yeah. They won't go and beat Jay-Z. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah, so figure it out for yourself and then take what you want to take from the um, celebrities and superstars that you idolize. Right? Because mm-hmm. if I find out that Beyonce is doing retrial somewhere, mm-hmm. I'm going to do retrial. Mm-mm. You understand? Mm. Ah, I'm still going to pray to my own God. <laughs> eh, because that's not me. Yeah, That's you trying to be somebody else. And the person has no responsibility for that. Especially if they continue doing crazy things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do you keep with that consistency? How many songs have you released this year alone? I mean, personally, I just dropped two singles, mm-hmm. but a couple of songs came out. Um, I think the song with I can, I okay. did a song with I can that came out this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I think the remix of the song I did with Samini. Okay. Yeah, and some other stuff. I'm sure. I know I have a list. Then you actually have a couple of things you have done over this this. Oh, few I months. have one of the best catalogs out of the country. Mm-hmm. It's very very sought after. Really? Yeah, but I keep piling it up because I love what I do. Okay, okay. I really love what I do. It makes me happy to be able to be able to transfer the energy that I do to people, for people like you to be singing my song and shit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. I'm grateful for that. So right after the first song? Super, super. Yeah. Yeah, I dropped a new one. It's called Jara Jara. Yeah. Go check it out. It's out on all platforms. It's a very amazing song. I did it with a Nigerian producer. Yeah. What's and the storyline? The EP line? is dropping in October. Okay. Um, I will say it here first so you have an exclusive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My EP is dropping in October. It's entitled No More Tears. Okay. Yes, it's for everybody that has been crying for too long. Okay. Yeah, it's time okay. to stop. Crying, no more tears. So it's gonna come out in October. So watch out for that. It's amazing. It's a body of work that I put a lot of energy and spirits into, and I know it's gonna change the world. Obviously. Boom. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it was it was nice having you. I actually enjoyed the episode. I don't know. It was cool, but. Quite interesting and educative. I think I've learned something. Thank you so much, E. This was good for me too. Yeah. Um, you know, I hope more people like you come out to ask reasonable questions like these. I appreciate your time mm. and the gesture. Um, thank you for for the platform also. Um, call me whenever you want me to come back. I'm blessed. Mm, anyways you. guys i hope you enjoyed this episode you know who it is podcast with missing make sure you like comment share and subscribe see you another time